In today's fast-paced world, you need a partner who's always looking out for what's coming next. A team with the expertise to help keep identities, payments, and data secure. One who can help protect your data and networks and secure the digital journey customers want now and in the future. So you can secure what you've built, protect what you're building, and accelerate your growth. Entrust. Securing a world in motion. Learn more at Entrust.com slash podcast. HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hi, I'm Abhinav Kaul and welcome to this edition of Mint Guru Portfolio. Today I have with me Prateek Oswal, Head of Passive Funds Business at Motilal Oswal Asset Management Company. Prateek, who is also the CEO of Glide Invest, will talk about his investment portfolio and strategy. Let's listen in. Hi, welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started on your money journey. So Prateek, thank you for talking to us. Thanks, Abhinav, and uh, thanks, Mint, for having me out here. Looking forward to this conversation. So my first question to you is, how do you identify yourself as an investor? Yeah, so Abhinav, so in terms of me as an investor, today's conversation is quite interesting because I personally don't have much of a strategy, but if I had to identify myself, it would be a minimalist. Also, my practice is basically buy and forget. So just to explain in detail, uh, in terms of my investing strategy is super simple. And this is something which has you know, been quite simple for a while now, where I essentially invest about 100% of my savings are in equity. And this is also in mo- mostly one large equity fund. So I've kept it super simple. That's why, you know, I think I, I call it the minimalist approach because, you know, it's just one fund and uh, it's basically, you know, buy and sort of, you know, forget about it. So is that fund a uh, Motila Loswal fund? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, obviously. Okay, and is it passive or uh, on the active side? So it's uh, it's a fund that I've been investing in for now many, many years. I would say seven, eight years plus. So, you know, it's an actively managed fund because back then we didn't have a passive business. Right. So you're saying you're 100% invested into equity. Yes, that's right. 100% in equity. I mean, in terms of broad, I do have very, very small percentages in alternatives. Uh, you know, some investments I've had in legacy when I was you know, working and living outside the outside India. But overall, you know, that's a very small part of my overall portfolio. So yeah, it's, it's basically 100% equity. And what would that alternatives be? Any specific asset? Yeah, basically those alternatives will be some amount and, and this is less than 1% of my portfolio, maybe, maybe less than 0.5, uh, maybe some international, you know, some cryptocurrency I bought in 2016 uh, when I was in the US, uh, maybe some uh, maybe some debt funds and also some, I would say, uh, international funds. So I think a very small proportion. I normally do that, do this to learn about an asset class or if I had to you know test out any platform. I've been working in sort of in the fintech industry for now, you know, almost uh, almost five to six years time. So I like, you know, just uh, investing and sort of testing out different platforms. But as I said, very small, you know, less mm-hmm. than 1%. Okay. So you mentioned crypto specifically. So you wanted to test it out. I'm assuming it might be Bitcoin or Ethereum since you invested back in 2016. What was the prime reason and why you stopped investing in that asset after that? <laughs> Actually, it's a funny story. Um, you know, one of the uh, I was working in San Francisco in 2016, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, one of my friends was very higher up in this in this exchange called Coinbase, which is you know, one of the biggest exchanges. Right. And uh, you know, I was looking to sort of apply for a job out there, so I thought just you know, in- investing in crypto, you know, would really help me maybe impressing the recruiter. So that's mm-hmm. how it started. But then obviously, I was convinced by my friend, uh, you know, who was there. So I invested a very small amount in 2016. And to be honest, after that, I, I've never really bought crypto. Uh, I'm not super bullish on it, to be honest. I still don't understand it. Uh, but it's, mm-hmm. it's just something which has been lying around since, since 2016. I mean, the good thing is that, you know, uh, it's enabled me to learn a lot about that industry, about DeFi, about, uh, you know, all these protocols. So in that sense, it's helped me learn. But as an investing class, you know, I don't think I'll be investing in it. Okay. And and you don't own debt, gold or real estate? Uh, no, no, nothing. No gold, no real estate, no debt. And how has your portfolio performed? I mean, since it's nearly 100% in equity. So how has equity performed over the past one year for you? 
Yeah, so basically in line with uh, what the market has done over the last say maybe seven to eight years time. So pretty much in line, I honestly haven't checked my performance in the last few months or maybe six to eight months time. So I don't know how it would have performed in the last uh, six months at least because we're having a bit of a bear market. But basically in line with what equity returns are, that's what I would expect from this sort of an allocation. I mean, since it's all in an equity fund, are you planning to invest? I mean, uh, outside this fund? Not really. I want to keep things simple. You know, I have a pretty high tolerance for risk. I'm okay with the risk, and um, I'm also not tolerant of complexity. So I want to stay away from complexity. Ideally, I want to spend maybe uh, maybe ten to fifteen minutes on my portfolio a year. And also, I know that you know, long term, it's going to do really well. So in that sense, you know, I think um, don't really intend to do anything outside of this. How do you go about your asset allocation? Not much of an. Um, I don't follow asset allocation. I think mm-hmm. uh, it's one asset class. So again, you know, I'm optimizing for simplicity. So not really follow asset allocation. I think asset allocation is great for a investor. So if I had to recommend someone, because I know most people may not have the sort of risk tolerance that I would have, uh, definitely would recommend asset allocation to every investor. And that's what I also, you know, I also run this company called Glide Invest, mm-hmm. which essentially does asset allocation for investors. So very good for investors, but I've basically found a way that works for me. Okay. International stocks, I mean, as you said, you don't invest in that. Do you look to invest in international stocks in the near future? Yeah, in terms of, you know, international stocks, uh, I do have a small legacy portfolio. So when I was mm-hmm. living in the US, I mean, I had a small sort of Robinhood account and, you know, I used to buy and just to, again, just to learn and just to invest uh, my sort of savings. But that's, again, very small part of my portfolio. To be honest, I am, as an investor, very bullish on long-term India. And I see international investments as more of a diversification strategy. And since I already don't diversify my portfolio, I I don't have any other asset class. So I think uh, I'm super bullish on India, you know, not really diversify my portfolio. So I'll probably stick to the strategy, what I have currently. Okay, and you would not look to uh, add gold or real estate in your portfolio? Uh, No, so I've bought jewelry for my my wife, but that's more for consumption. Right. You know, never invest in gold. You know, again, gold is one asset class, which I would recommend to a lot of investors because uh, historically it's done well in, you know, especially in challenging situations or challenging times. You know, again, I would not do it for myself because uh, I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, focused on the simple sort of 100% equity portfolio. And uh, what about cash allocation? Uh, given the market condition, have you increased it or do you plan to increase it? Or since it's a, like the markets are falling, you want to deploy cash? Not so. So I have a very interesting uh, or something very weird system that I do. And this is something that, you know, I've learned from my family is that, uh, you know, whenever my savings account, you know, goes over a certain threshold automatically and and whenever it happens the next day, that uh, amount gets, you know, transferred to my uh, mutual fund portfolio. So it's, you know, it's sort of automated, you know, my investments in the sense that, you know, whenever my balance goes above a certain amount, it automatically gets transferred to mutual funds. So in that sense, I think that's basically means that, you know, I don't really have a lot of cash and I'm Mm -hmm. 100% equity at all times. So that's basically what it is. Okay. And is there any percentage threshold? uh, No, it's it's, it's not a percentage. It's actually an absolute amount. Okay. So suppose just to give an example, it's not not real. But suppose I wanted to keep a minimum balance of safe say 3 lakh rupees so mm-hmm. whenever my savings account you know goes above 3 lakh rupees to say 3 and a half lakh or maybe 4 mm-hmm. lakh rupees you know, maybe my salary came in so uh, so automatically that difference uh, my accountant you know, sort of transfer that to my mutual fund account so you know basically I'll make sure that you know there's always that minimum amount in my savings bank but whenever there's something more than that that's mm-hmm. automatically transferred to my mutual funds and yeah. how many months emergency fund do you provision for? Another weird thing that I don't really have an emergency fund. I normally, as I said, I have the threshold uh, which I keep in my liquid funds. Uh, for example, in this case, it's you know three lakh rupees that I spoke about. Mm. So essentially, that that I mean, you can call it a pseudo emergency fund. Also, you know, uh, whenever I have, I have a big purchase, and this is maybe super tax inefficient, but I basically treat my mutual fund account like a liquid fund. Where if I have a big purchase, I sell mm. my MF units and use that to fund that big purchase. So suppose I'm buying some furniture for my house or suppose I'm going for a trip abroad you know, mm-hmm. where obviously I need more than you know that amount, then I would sell MF units and uh, sort of use that to purchase or to, you know, use that to travel or whatever it is. So it's not it's not something I would recommend to a lot of people. It's not mm-hmm. sound advice, but it sort of works for me. So that's why I do it. And uh, do you have any life insurance, health insurance? Uh, no, I don't. So my so, uh, so the company, uh, you know, MO provides health insurance. Uh, I don't have any life insurance with me. I'll probably 
maybe have that in place over the next 5 years i still only started my career so maybe mm-hmm. in the next 4 uh, to 5 years i look at you know setting up a life insurance but i do have health insurance obviously that the company provides coming to i mean personal details were you able to go on a holiday in the past year oh holiday so in fact last month or not last month in may i had uh, we did a fun family trip there were around 75 people of my family members we'd all gone to kashmir um, it was fun because you know i haven't seen most of my family in the last two years because of covid mm-hmm. so it was a good trip where i got to meet everyone you know after a long time so that was my my last vacation and when do you uh, plan to take your next vacation Uh, actually in september i'm going to an uh, electronic music festival actually this is in england in september so okay. i normally go for a festival every two years so this time uh, i'll be going in september so l- really looking forward to that okay and uh, i assume you were not able to go during the covid no time. yeah exactly i haven't so last one was in 2019 so okay. you know definitely something which i'm looking forward to this year and any lifestyle change that you picked up during the lockdown that will become permanent definitely um, i wouldn't say work from home but you know, the concept of work from anywhere is something which you know i really enjoyed and that's something which which will you know maybe be a small part of my time over the year so i do like working from office as well but uh, i also enjoy working from anywhere so that's something which i definitely see myself sort of using uh, apart from that you know just um, i think i read a tweet somewhere Mm-hmm. Uh, where you know ideally you should uh, move your body calm the stomach and empty the mind so basically more of that is something which you know i'll probably do which 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 has had a change because i think uh, i mean even i had covid so you know i realized the importance of you know oh. eating well taking care of your body and uh, i've always been into meditation for a long time so the idea is obviously uh, you know covid because we were staying at home and had uh, a little bit more free time than normal uh, spent a lot more uh, i mean realized uh, uh, more about you know taking care of yourself any 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 book recommendation recent book that you read that you found interesting there is this book i um, i mean i'm just about to finish actually it's called it's by nasib talib you know it's a great book it's one of the best books i've read uh, well i mean he's one of my favorite authors so mm-hmm. uh, he, he wrote this book called anti fragile in fact i also read his books in the game sometime this year so that was also you know a f- fantastic book so definitely i think if someone you know is looking for something uh you know coming from first principles thinking mm-hmm. especially when it comes to finance and psychology i think uh, you know nasib is a is a man to go so i've been reading his books for now 20 years and i think he's a pretty i would say very very different from uh, other sort of you know right. fantasy books out there you talk about finance do you involve your wife in your financial decisions yeah i do i do we do make decisions together uh, in fact uh, you know she actually Uh, is new to finance uh, because uh, she she was living abroad for 10 years uh, in the okay. UK so she did have a portfolio out there and all that but it was not really structured uh, so i think uh, unlike me and my simple sort of style of investing hers is a little bit more uh, disciplined uh, you know she uses asset allocation but obviously 100% equity uh, but mm-hmm. again she's diversified into four to five different funds and strategies and uh, all of that Uh, mm-hmm. so yes you know we do i mean we did talk about it you know when she initially had you know build this portfolio uh, but post that it's just you know sips uh, monthly contributions and um, yeah so now we don't really talk about it as much because it's more like now you know plug and play i have last two questions first is given the st- structure of your portfolio <laughs> it's you're yeah. quite an outlier uh, there's no debt uh, gold real estate there's some i mean crypto why no, 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 the, the crypto is very small huh? yeah like, less than 0.5 um, legacy stuff said. that came in 2016 i haven't bought anything after it was just mm-hmm. uh, obviously uh, not a bad time to get in <laughs> but not something which uh, i mean the problem is you know, uh, like the drawdowns are so terrible and severe right. you know so it's not something which most people will be able to summon not really sure what the future is going to be like but yeah it, it, it's something which i did to learn uh, obviously it's been a good learning but anyway sorry please continue Yeah so if you can explain why is that why you you're consider you can be considered as an outlier in the way your portfolio is structured why is that you know honestly uh, you know someone who has who's been in finance for you know now uh, more than a decade 12 12 13 14 years uh, i would say that you know i've always and this is also coming from you know my family how they invest also very simple way so i think uh, a lot of the influences come from my family uh, but also you know personally i think I always talk about simple investing, minimalist investing, you know, index funds and all of that. So I I do believe that you know you really don't. I mean, if if you have that uh, threshold of risk, you know, you could keep it super simple, and and also you know the simplicity also helps in the sense that you know I don't really chase fads, which is great because you know I think most fads, I would say ninety five percent of them are just end up being just fads. 
um so i think it keeps it simple you know i don't uh, it's a huge um, in terms of you know saving time i don't have to look at it i probably look at it once every 6 months or so so in that sense you know it's uh, effective in terms of time in terms of you know mind space mm-hmm. i don't have to worry about investing in that particular sectoral fund or you know some fund so i think uh, the idea is to keep things very simple and i'm pretty confident that also this approach is very effective i may not be in the top quartile of people who make a lot of money but you know i think in terms of uh, the sort of stress it gives me it, i think it's pretty simple and and i intend to use this in the future as well so uh, i don't really have to spend time and effort thinking mm-hmm. about my investments uh, i also don't do any startup investments so no, i have uh, been very uh, i would say uh, because uh, you know i have worked at startups you know i have raised money for startups so that's something which i may open up maybe in the future but so far i have zero investments it's something which again as i said you know to learn something it's it's um, more from a learning perspective uh, but again you know i think uh, startup investing means you know big amounts so which is what's sort of keeping me away from that so so again just to reinforce simplicity right my last question is uh, what does wealth mean to you one of my biggest uh, i would say motivations about you know why i wake up in the morning and you know why i sort of go about doing my day and the sort of stuff i do is you know i really love learning whether it is from books or people I think uh, it really gives me that excitement if, if I learn something new or if I read something new you know I think learning is pretty important and central in my life and I think I mean the more money you have the better access you have to sort of smarter people and and that's something which I have seen in my life I've also seen with you know people have like I mean clients and also you know other people I've sort of met up with so I do believe that you know money gives you access to or more and more money you know gives you access to you know better not, not better but at least smarter people people with a lot more knowledge than you have mm-hmm. and I think that leads to more learning opportunities so I think uh, I mean books are anyway cheap but you know you can learn a lot from people Uh, so I think that's you know something of uh, you know what money for me is uh, is is right now and what I think money can be for me. Yeah, I mean just just to give you an analogy, and this is again from a finance field. If you're running a fund which is say a 50 crore fund, you know you would probably get access to an analyst in a big bank. You know, whereas mm-hmm. if you're on a 500 crore fund, you will you know get in touch with that head of research. But if you're a 5,000 crore fund, you know you talk straight to the CEO of the company. You know, and mm-hmm. the and the and I, I think the the ability to to sort of learn the most you know would come from the ceo of that company that's you know i think a big advantage of money and that's what i guess wealth means to me uh, what motivates me in, in in sort of you know building more wealth and creating more wealth and all that right that's an interesting point that's it prateek pleasure talking to you yeah great thanks abhinav that's it for today if you have any questions you can write to us at mintmoney@redlimen.com if you want me to cover any specific topic dm me at @abhinavcall at twitter To stay updated on this podcast, follow HT Smartcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and LinkedIn. To listen to more such podcasts, log on to htsmartcast.com or suno nay nazariye se. This was a Mint production brought to you by HT Smartcast. HT Smartcast. In today's fast-paced world, you need a partner with the expertise to protect identities, payments, and data, so you can secure what you've built, protect what you're building, and accelerate your growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion. Learn more at entrust.com/podcast.